Hey guys, and welcome to the Nicole Crank Show, where I'm glad we're getting to hang out and just kind of be real. And I wanted to be real today about hurt, getting our feelings hurt, and then getting in this prison of hurt, which turns into a fence, which keeps us fenced in in our life. And then we have to forgive. So we're getting ready to get into the High God book and just talking about hurt and forgiveness, but I wanna just talk for a second about the little things that can actually hurt our feelings. And I'm about to reveal some things from my personal life, so don't tell like my husband or my kids. Cause like the kids, like every now and then Ashton will come crawl up in our bed and hang out between me and David. And then she'll like give me her booty and snuggle up to her daddy. And I just get the booty side and I'm like, Girl, I carried you on my stomach for nine months. How does he get the love out of this deal? What is even up? Or like the kids. So I have a son, he's 29. I know this is where you tell me I look too not young to have a 29 year old. Boy, la boy. Anyway, I've got a 29 year old son, he's married. And like the kids will like call David or they'll send him a video. So this morning they sent him a video and they didn't send it to me. And so we called them and I'm like, hey, and then I put, did a baby voice because I was hurt. So I did a baby voice. I'm like, hey, that's my baby. I carried you in my tummy. I sang to you, you are my sunshine, my only sunshine. And here I was trying to be vulnerable to him, but really my feelings were just hurt. So I had to forgive him a little bit. How about this? When you have a group of friends and they go do a thing, but they didn't invite you to the thing and now you feel left out of the thing and now you're like mad at everybody in the friend group and maybe they thought you were committed or busy or couldn't go, so they didn't invite you, but you wanted the invite just so you could turn it down. Am I talking to you right now? And I wanna know if I'm talking to you. If I'm talking to you, I need to hear back from you on Instagram. Somebody needs to live tweet me right now and hashtag Nicole Crank Show because I wanna know who's on this bus with me. This bus, this journey from the life of hurt, imprisonment in our feelings, I'm all up in my feelings right now, and then getting to that place of forgiveness where we're free from all that mess. And sometimes we gotta get free every day. Well, let's go into talk about freedom, forgiving, and getting out of hurt out of the High God book. Hey friends, I've heard so many people tell me that they're really nervous to talk to God. Like, what do I say? And I always think it's so easy, but I think that's because at this point I've developed a, a relationship, a friendship with him. And so it's easy for me to talk to him. So anytime I fangirl, um, I, I was just recently at a place and I met a drummer from a band that we think is cool. And I knew he was the drummer. And so I was trying to think of things to say and I wanted to be cool and I didn't want to be weird. And so I wasn't me and I wasn't authentic. And he probably would have liked me better if I had been more relaxed and normal but I couldn't be normal because it was dumb. But I think that's what we experience when we try to have conversations with God. Not that God judges us like a person does because he doesn't. He's just really excited anytime we talk to him because he's in heaven wishing we would. It's one of the reasons he created us was to, to talk to him, to be endeared to him, to love him. And it's really hard to love somebody that you don't talk to. So he wants to talk to us. So what do we let hold us back? Sometimes it's fear, sometimes it's insecurity. Sometimes it's, oh my gosh, I'm not worthy to talk to him. Well, I have news for you. I mean, we're never worthy to talk to him. We don't earn it, we don't deserve it. It's a gift that he gives us. He gives us righteousness through Jesus. So if you get really comfortable with the fact of, hey, there's a God out there, he loves me. He loves me even though I'm messed up and he loves me even though I hurt and he loves me even though I hurt other people, but he doesn't hold any of that against me. Really, he just wants to spend time with me. It's why I wrote this book called High God. I guess it's structured like a devotional and you could read it 60 days in a row, but I didn't want you to, I didn't want it to be that way. I actually wrote it topically. I waited until I was in these places of pain or my feelings were hurt or I was in a hashtag mood or just <laughs> aggravated or I needed healing in my body. I was sick or I, I needed money because I didn't know how I was going to pay the bill. I, I waited till I was in these situations and then I put my pain on a page so that other people could benefit from it. So we've all been here. It says, I really thought we were close. I still love them, but obviously the love only goes one way. I'm tempted to stop putting myself out there for new relationships. You ever felt like that? Maybe you didn't intentionally decide to build a wall between you and other people, but maybe you're just said, kind of tired of being hurt. 
I'm not ready to be uh, put an emotional mortgage out there again. Really, I just need time to heal. And each one of those things is the enemy trying to close us off, making us lonely. Well, that's the worst place to be, isn't it? Isn't it the worst when you're lonely, but you don't want to pursue new relationships? You don't want to be around people because they kind of make you mad and tick you off and hurt your feelings, but you don't want to be home alone either. So here we are home alone on a Friday night going, what's the problem? And really, it's the enemy. The enemy is like, <laughs> I know what the problem is. I've helped you build this wall of hurt and offense and bitterness and resentment. And the very thing that we want, love, we're walling off. Well, you know what we're going to do today? We're working on tear down that wall, Mr. Gorbachev. Tear down that wall. I don't know if any of you remember that back in the day with that German wall that got torn down between East and West Berlin. But we're gonna tear down that wall today. Let's do it together. I'm tempted to stop putting myself out there for new relationships. I'm afraid it's not worth it. I feel like building a big wall around my heart to keep people out. Part of me wants to talk about the people who hurt me and tell others how they've mistreated me. Their love for me failed, so why can't I talk about how wrong they did me? But that's not what you would do. Your love never fails. All right, now are you feeling a little bit um, like you don't measure up? Like, God, your love never fails, but mine sure does. Failure, there's that word I didn't want to talk about. Failure, why did you have to tell me how I failed? Well, we want an honest conversation with him, right? We've failed in some spots. That's why we need his help. But, oh, the good news is coming. Don't get depressed. The good news is coming. Hang with me for 30 more seconds. It says, I want to say an eye for an eye. If you feel me, just like sit in your living room or in your car or wherever you're watching right now and say amen. You want an eye for an eye. They did this to me. They deserve to pay. I want my money back. Need restoration. I'm going to sue those people. We do those things, right? We want an eye for an eye. But you say to turn the other cheek. This is a frozen fake smile, because that's how we do that when he wants us to turn the other cheek. Now I keep my mouth shut about how others have done me wrong, and you shut the mouths of my enemies. You see, it says in the Bible, whatever you give shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall God cause men to give unto your bosom. That's Luke 6, 38. And a lot of times we think about that, about money or about offering, but it's even about keeping our mouth shut. When we keep our mouths shut on our enemies, we are sowing a seed that we can reap a harvest of our enemies keeping our, their mouths shut about us. Ooh, I could use some of that. You see, we serve a God of benefits. I love it in Psalms where it says, forget not his benefits. It's David, he's talking to God. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. He forgives my sins, he, he heals my diseases. What? All of his benefits, this sowing and reaping thing, it's one of his benefits. And he gives us the opportunity to sow grace, to sow forgiveness. He gives us the opportunity to sow keeping our mouth shut so we can reap a whole lot of that. Does anybody want that? Who am I talking to right now? Hey family, are you like me? If you ever wanted to talk to God but thought, mm hmm, would well, the creator of the universe actually want to talk to me? The answer is yes. But you're probably thinking, how does that work anyway? I'm not sure how to pray or what I'm supposed to say. I get it. Sometimes that's how I feel, believe it or not. I get feeling lost, alone, and kind of unsure of myself. So I started writing down all my personal conversations and speaking directly to God. Actually, that's how I wrote, hi God, it's me again. What to pray when you don't know what to say. Face it, we're all busy and we have so many things pulling at our attention. We know we should go to God even in our craziness, but how do we find the time? Hi God is full of easy to read chapters that will encourage and empower you to start having your own regular daily conversations with God. To thank you for being such a great partner with the television program and the ministry, I'd love to send you a free chapter to help get you started. Just go to my website, nicolecrank.com forward slash hi God and request your free chapter. Or get this, just for your gift of $10, we will send you the entire book. I promise it's gonna make a dramatic difference in your life. Either way, don't forget to connect with me on social media and tell me all about your Hi God time. I'd love to hear from you.
You really know how to motivate someone. Doesn't he? Doesn't his promises motivate you? He says, I'll act like my father. I'll follow your example. When I extend grace to people who've hurt me, you bless me in an area that I need it the most. Let me ask you right now, what area do you need God to move most in right now? Do you need him to open a door of opportunity? Maybe you've been knocking and knocking and knocking and knocking on this door and it wouldn't open. Maybe you need him to unlock that door for you. Maybe you need his favor on your life in an area with your boss, with that certain, certain somebody, somebody you've been, you know, keeping your eye on. Maybe you need it with a friend or you've been wanting to repair a relationship with. Maybe you need it in your body. Maybe you've been dealing with uh, hypertension over and over again. Maybe you've been, gout keeps coming back. Maybe this cholesterol thing, you have trouble getting into your, getting it in control. Maybe there's this hamstring that just won't seem to heal. What is it? And then let's take that to God. I'll act like my father. I will follow your example. When I extend grace to people who have hurt me, you bless me in an area I need it most. We just talked about that. And right now I need grace in the area of strong relationships. Thank you, God, for healing my heart and meeting all my needs, including my relationships. Thank you for providing me with the strength to get over my hurt feelings. Thank you, God, for taking such good care of me. I believe that you have people seeking me out. God does. He, he has people right now looking for you. You know, David and I, David is my husband. We've been married like 20 years now. Wow which is pretty impossible since I'm 18 in my head, but we've been married like 20 years now. And I think it's so funny when we talked about our past, he used to go to this uh, little Italian restaurant in this little town. Guess who was a server in that restaurant? He used to go there with his dad. I probably served their table. Why didn't we hook up sooner? I could have like not married the wrong guy and not been abused. It would have been incredible. Or maybe I would have met him right away and I wouldn't have been a pregnant unmed mother at 17. I could have married him and our life could have been so perfect. Uh, he also used to go to the same 7-Eleven in that town that I used to go to, and he used to eat. His favorite thing to do in that 7-Eleven was go to the nacho machine. We're at the nacho cheese machine together, but I, I, I don't know him. In that same small town, one of my good friends, Kathy, she lived in this house. I spent the night in her house. We were all, did the same things in high school. I spent the night there. He drove me by in that small town in Eureka, Missouri. He drove me through Eureka, Missouri and drove down Orchard. As he drove down Orchard, he showed me the house he used to live in. As he points to the house, I said, you have got to be kidding me. You bought that house from the Pembertons. He said, yes, I did. How do you know that? He, th he thought it was a stalker. How did you know that? I said, because I used to be great friends with the Pembertons. I used to spend the night in that house. He's like, no way. We're spending the night in the same house. We're at the same nacho machine at the same 7-Eleven. He's coming to this little Italian restaurant all in this little town. We've got these circles around each other, but we didn't intersect. Why? Well, I wasn't ready for him. I don't think I was ready for him. I think I would have scared that boy off. Matter of fact, I'm pretty sure I would have scared that boy off. God needed to mellow me out. God needed to, to do a work in me and get my humility higher. God needed to up my grace level so that I didn't mess up the relationship that he had out there for me. So I had to get my bumps and my lumps and my bruises somewhere else. So I was ready for that strong relationship. So we were just talking about, God, I believe you have people seeking me out right now for precious friendships and long lasting relationships, for fun and love and good times and laughs. They're looking for you. David was looking for me. He was at that 7-Eleven. He didn't know it, but he was looking for me. He was at that Italian restaurant. He didn't know it, but he was looking for me. He bought that house. He didn't know it, but he was looking for me. I just wasn't ready for him. God's got people looking for you right now, and he's wanting to get you ready for him. How? By talking to him. It says, I believe there are wonderful people praying right now to meet someone just like me. And then I, I, I go to three scriptures. These are these promises that we can bank on. The first one is Matthew 5, 39. It says, but I say to you, don't resist the one who is evil. But if anybody slaps you on the right cheek, turn the other one to him also. <clears throat> Boy, that will straighten us right up, won't it? You know, I, I have some friends who say, I'm a strong woman. So I got to tell you what I'm thinking. I'm a strong man. I got to tell you what I'm thinking. It actually takes more strength to bite your tongue in those moments than to just loose what you're thinking. To 
That's why the Bible says we have to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Because His might can help us control eh, this little guy right here. Which helps us not begin to exit relationships. Begin to exit relationships. What does that mean? You might be in a relationship with somebody and we say things that open the mayonnaise jar. So uh, let's think of it this way. Um, if there is a mayonnaise jar and you're trying to open it for the first time, you're struggling. <laughs> Once the integrity of that seal is broken, the next time you open the mayonnaise jar, you're like, Phew. then you can do it with one finger and you're kind of showing off. You're like, Phew. and you spin that lid, right? Because it's been open. Well, we begin to sit those relationships when we break the integrity of them because they say something to us and instead of us holding our tongue turning the other cheek we rail something back and those words stick and the enemy tries to fester those wounds hey family if you ever come up against something and you need a little encouragement feeling a little low or a little down, regardless of what was going on, I know how you feel. There are some days I need encouragement just to get to lunchtime. And then once I make it to lunchtime, hello, I need encouragement to make it through the rest of the day. And you know, it's nice to know that sometimes it's not just me. For the Lord God, my God, he's never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. He's going to be with you until all of the work for the service of the Lord is done. So what in the world? Why? Why is this happening? Things are going good. I think that's why we're connecting is because you might have woken up today and looked around and gone, things are going pretty good. So why do I feel this way? I mean, nothing terrible is happening. Nothing dramatic has gone wrong. And yet I feel this pressure. God connected us today for me to tell you, be strong. Be of good courage. Don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. For the Lord, my God, your God, he's with you and he connected us today so that you could hear he's never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. You're going to be all right. God's got your back. God's out in your future. He's in your present and he was always there in your past. He's always has been and he always will be. He goes before of you to make a way for you. So today, friend, be led forth with peace. How do you know if you're taking the right steps? Take steps of peace. I don't know if I can take peace. I'm afraid. No, don't fear and don't be dismayed because that's going to interrupt your peace so you won't know if you can take that step or not. Tap into the peace. Don't tap into the fear. Just say, fear, I refuse for you to be in my life today. I trust in the Lord with all my heart. I lean not unto my own understanding. I acknowledge God in all my ways. And I want you to say this out loud right now. Say, God, I acknowledge you. I listen to you. I believe you. I'm leaving a space for you to say it. I need you. I'm going to follow you. I trust you. You've got me. You've never failed me, no matter what. I was at a restaurant the other day with some friends. They were newer friends, so I was still kind of trying to impress them. I picked out my good jeans and I put on my nice sweater and it's really cool jacket that I'm like, oh, I want to wear this to preach in one day because it makes me feel good about myself. But I, I took it out. A lot of times I'll save my good clothes and I'll wear them for you first, right? And then I'll wear them out. But I took it out, took my jacket out for a spin. I mean, I paid $24.99 for it at, at, at TJ Maxx, but I'm not going to tell you that on the day I wear it. I'm just going to let you think it's really cool. So I wear my $24.99 jacket and this guy's walking by in the restaurant and he spills red wine. It goes down the front of me. It gets on both of my sleeves. It gets on the front of my very favorite jeans. It gets on the back of my very favorite jeans. I had on slides. It even got on the bottom of my foot. I do not know how I could have been covered in this other person's wine from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. Kind of makes me think about Jesus grace and how it covers me from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. But it managed to get everywhere. And I thought about it and I was upset about it and I was hurt about it. And I thought about it for a couple of days until I, I, I let it go. I soaked all my clothes in club soda and I thought, okay, this whole outfit, my very favorite jeans that they don't make anymore, my, my jacket I never got to wear is probably all ruined. God forgive him, he didn't mean to do it. And I kind of said it with kind of a, like a resignation. Soaked it in club soda. I woke up the next morning. You're not gonna believe this. I hadn't even put it in the washing machine yet. 
and the stains were gone. This, 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 this is what God is wanting to do in your life right now. Those stains of hurt that you're like, they are so deep on my soul. I didn't even know I had a stain of hurt on the bottom of my foot. These, these pains that are so deep in you, you don't even, it's on the back. How did it get back here? That's what God's wanted to take out. Are you calling God club soda? Maybe. He's the club soda of your soul to take the hurt away. But first we gotta be willing to show it to him so he knows where to where to pour it. So this is your chance, friend. Who are you mad at? Who are you hurt by? Who are you offended at? I'll tell you, so I, had to, I had to forgive my family for something that they didn't even know they did. So we were uh, at a hotel and we got in the hotel and you had to put your key card in to hit your number. And David had the key card and Ashton had a key card and I had all these bags, so I set them down. The door opens on the floor. I turn around to grab the bags. They get off the elevator. I turn around to get off the elevator and the door's already closed. And I am trapped on this elevator. I'm like, okay, my family is gonna hit the button. They're gonna realize I'm not here. I'm gonna stay on the elevator. They're gonna let me off. And my family never hit the button. They just left. So the only place I can go is a lobby. So I go to the lobby. I don't have my ID. My daughter had my purse. I have to convince them of who I am to give me another key so I can finally go upstairs. They let me upstairs. It doesn't work in the hotel door. So I have to start knocking. Nobody's answering the door and I am livid with my family. David finally opens the door. I'm like, how could you not have missed me? I'm like, he's like, I thought you were in Ashton's room. I'm like, where did Ashton think I was? I'm like, I bet she thought you were in our room. They all thought I was right behind them the whole time and I'd just gone in the other person's room. Here I am aggravated, frustrated, mad. God's like, hey, Nicole, time for you to exercise some forgiveness. What better way to exercise forgiveness than to tell the whole world just exactly how shallow you can be at times. <sighs> but I'm sharing my situation, so that hopefully it helps you with your situation. Good morning, and welcome to the Nicole Crank Show. Let's get right into it. Leash right here, beautiful. Isn't that just how so many people get stuck? Anymore, you find yourself in some interesting situation. Okay, Nicole Crank's getting ready. Incredible. They might have your recipe. But they can't bake your cake. I believe God has put us together today. By faith, don't be scared of that mountain. I wanted to talk to you about the proven way to start your day. I just wanna share this with you real quick. Check out what he says, hurt into a benefit. He said, but he said to me, my grace, my favor, my loving kindness and mercy is enough for you. It's sufficient against any danger and enables you. Right now say, who me? Yeah, you. It enables you to bear the trouble manfully for my strength, for God's strength and power are made perfect. They are fulfilled and completed and show themselves most effective in our weakness. What? He can turn a hurt into a benefit? His strength is perfect in our weakness. Therefore, I will all the more gladly glory in my weakness and infirmities than the, so that the strength and the power of Christ the Messiah may rest, yes, may pitch a tent over and dwell upon me. Don't worry about when you failed. Don't worry about when you couldn't forgive. Don't worry about when you couldn't do it. I'm telling you right now, he says that hurt, that thing that hurt you, the fact that I did some stuff and I shared it with you, he's gonna turn it for a benefit, not just to help you, but to help other people. Genesis 50, 20 says, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for my good to the saving of many souls. This is even bigger than just you friends today. This isn't just you forgiving somebody. This is you stepping into your destiny. It says, I believe that you have people seeking me out right now for friendship, for relationship, for fun and love and good times and laughs. I believe you have someone praying to meet someone just like me. The same way I'm praying for a new relationship right now. So the last piece of work we're gonna do together today says, I'll be open to new relationships and allow new friendships to form by. Here's your action step. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do to make sure that you're open to friendships and relationships? Maybe, maybe you still wanna kinda keep this wall in place. Maybe you put down the next invitation I receive, I will accept, period. I don't wanna go there, nope, nope, nope. The next invitation I receive, I will accept. I, maybe you write down, I will text five friends I haven't talked to in over a month and tell them I'm thinking about them today. Open those doors. Maybe it's that you're gonna call that one person that you know there's a little tension with and you're just gonna call them and in love on them no matter what they say. 
What are you going to do? Some action steps. Write it down. Writing it down gives us some accountability. And then this last thing just says, thank you, God, for being with me when I feel betrayed and hurt. Thank you for holding me up when I want to quit. Thank you for being one step ahead of me, preparing someone's heart to be a confidant and a dear friend to me. And while we're talking, and this friend is when I end my conversation with you and let you just talk to him. I want to pray for you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you so much. Thank you for being so forgiving that we can't even conceive it and help us, God, to know what you've done for us so that we can be like you. We can be like our Father and that we can forgive other people. You have new relationships for us. You have new friendships for us. You have a stronger marriage for us. You have stronger relationships with our children for us, stronger relationships with our parents for us, stronger relationships for our bosses and our coworkers, God. You have opportunities, you have potential, you have availability, God. And I pray that a flood of favor heads their way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. I love getting real with y'all and I love when y'all get real with me. So this isn't supposed to be a one-way conversation. This is supposed to be a conversation. So I want to invite you to the conversation. How do you get involved? We've got a bunch of different segments. The show is going to get more segmented, which means we're going to be hearing from you more and talking to you more. And here's how we can do that. I want you to go to NicoleCrank.com and click on where you ask a question. And we want to communicate back and forth. We want to be able to hear from you on social media, talk to you on social media. So go to Instagram, Nicole Crank. Go to Facebook. Facebook, go to Twitter and make sure you hashtag Nicole Crank Show. And we're going to be looking at those together. Me personally and the whole team are going to be looking at this, answering you, getting ideas from you. This is our television program where we have conversations where they're real, they're raw, they're organic, and a little bit behind the scenes. We want to keep you involved on every step of the way. And if this helped you today, there's so much more. Hey, 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 hey. You can go to YouTube. And you can subscribe to the Crank, my last name, Crank It Up. You can go to the Crank Ministries uh, channel on YouTube. Just hit that subscribe button and boom, I will pop up in your inbox like once or twice a week. I'm not gonna bug you, it's not gonna be too much. So just go there and get fed, get encouraged. I'm gonna put some little 60 second videos on there. You're gonna love what you get, but you gotta subscribe to it. While we're subscribing, while you're on Instagram or Facebook, top right corner, three little dots, click it, turn notifications on because I will be every week going live on Instagram and asking you for the questions to help us with the Ask Nicole section of the show. So it's your chance to be part of this because we want to make it for you. You're my friends. Thanks for joining us today. Love y'all.